This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. We're going to determine whether or not these two functions, f and g, are inverses. And to do that, we compute f of g of x and g of f of x. And remember, when you compute that and they're inverses, that means your answer will have to be x for each of them. Alright, so let's start. Let's begin by computing f of g of x. So we want f of, and then I look over there, what's g of x? Oh, that's x minus 9 over 4. So I'm just replacing g of x with what the function actually is. And now I have x minus 9 over 4 in the parentheses. I'm going to replace that x with this x minus 9 over 4. So I have 4 times x minus 9 over 4. All right, there's your x, and then I have this plus 9. Okay, so now we do order of operations. This is a multiplication here, and the 4's cancel. So that's nice. So we have x plus 9, I'm sorry, that's a minus sign x minus 9 plus 9, that equals x, ah, so they are inverses. For practice, let's also do g of f of x. If one of them comes out x, it undoes, um, in other words, f and g are supposed to undo each other, so whatever you put in the parentheses, you should get um, the same thing coming out of the parentheses. So if you put in x, out comes x, right? So let's also verify it this way. So this is g of, now what's f of x? So oh, it's 4x plus 9. So g of x is x minus 9 over 4, so I'm going to replace this x with what's in the parentheses, the 4x plus 9. So I have a fraction, and I'm putting in 4x plus 9, that's what x is, minus 9 all over 4. So in the numerator, 4x plus 9 minus 9 is 4x. 4x over 4 is x, so I verified it. So these are inverses. Now keep in mind it doesn't matter what you plug in to the function. In other words, if you put f of g of stuff, you're going to get the stuff out. So f of g of some stuff whatever it happens to be, if f and g are inverses, whatever you put in, that's what comes out. That happens if f and g are inverses. So let's just do that problem. Put in some stuff, whatever you feel like. Um, in fact, you could even write the word stuff. So let's see, we had 4x plus 9, x minus 9 over 4. All right, let's put in some stuff. Okay, we're going to put in some stuff. Oops. Remember what I'm doing here. I'm doing f of g of x. And instead of putting in x, I'm just going to put in some stuff. Okay? So what's that mean? What's g of stuff? Well, that means I've got stuff in place of x. So I need to write stuff, whatever that is, minus 9 over 4. I just got some stuff. Don't worry about it. And now we're going to plug this into the f function, which says do 4 times whatever f in parentheses. So I have 4 times, all right, all this stuff I see in the parentheses which is actually stuff minus 9 all over 4. All right, that's the 4x, and I have to add 9. What's going to happen here? My 4s cancel. And I'm going to get stuff minus 9 plus 9. Ha! Huh. Stuff minus 9 plus 9. Look. Look, when I put in stuff, 
and I did f of g of a, uh, f of g of stuff, I got the same stuff coming out. Doesn't matter what you plug in. You could plug in um, anything you want, but it's easier just to plug in f. I mean x, right? May as well just do f of g of x to verify. Let's just do it for something else. Let's see what happens. All right, so if f and g are inverses, if I do g of f of anything, that's what should pop out. So our answer should be x squared plus 5, but let's go through the computation. So I am doing g of, now what's f of x squared plus 5? Hmm. Well, i got to do 4 times. What am I replacing? And for x here, I'm replacing it with this x squared plus 5 plus 9. So before I could do the g function, I need to simplify what's in that parentheses. So that's 4x squared, doing the distributive property, plus 20 plus 9, which is g of 4x squared plus 29. Now, now I've simplified what's in parentheses. I've got to now replace that in for x in this function. Okay. So let's do that. So we've got the fraction bar. We're going to put in 4x squared plus 29 for my x up here, minus 9. And then the whole thing's over 4. So let's see. That's going to go 4x squared plus 20. And now I have a fraction. In order to reduce fractions, you need to factor. And the 4 factor is out of the numerator. So 4 times x squared plus 5 over 4. And you see what's going to happen? Your answer is going to be x squared plus 5. So when I plugged in x squared plus 5, I'm not sure if you could see, I think you can see all that. I'm going to make this just slightly smaller. Make sure it's on the screen. Let's see. Here we go. All right. So when I plugged in, x squared plus 5 into one function, then I plug that into the inverse function, I got whatever I plugged in. That always happens, every single time. But, you know, so it's, you, you could have fun just plugging anything you want in, some number, some crazy a polynomial, whatever you'd like. Um, that will always happen if they're inverse functions. The easy way to do it is just compute f of g of x and g of f of x. All right, let's try another problem. Find f of g of x and g of f of x and state whether f and g are inverses or not. All right, so first let's do f of g of x. So that's f of, now what am I putting in for g of x? x plus 3 over 7. All right, because that comes from over here, right? That's what g of x is. And now I have to plug in x plus 3 plus 7 in for my x, right, in the f function. So that's 3 times x plus 3 over 7. That's what I'm plugging in for x, minus 7. Okay, well, hmm, nothing cancels this time. So I have to do the distributive property. Remember, this is 3 over 1. So that gives me 3x plus 9 over 7, minus 7, and I'm going to get a common denominator over here, 7 over 7, right, which is going to be 49 sevenths, All right, so in order to do computations with fractions, you do have to have common denominators. So what does this give me? If I have a common denominator, you subtract the numerators, so I have 3x, now, you have plus 9 minus 49, that's minus 40 over 7. Hmm, so I plugged in x. I did not get x. I got 3x minus 20. So no, these are not inverses. Now, I did say to also do g of f of x. Let's do that because that's good practice. But once you, once it's not true, you know, for one of these, they're simply not inverses. That's how you can prove that. Okay, so same functions, let's compute g of f of x. 
So that's g of, now, f of x is just right here, 3x minus 7. Okay, so I plug that in. That's what f of x actually equals. And now I'm going to plug in 3x minus 7 in place of x, right, in the g function. So there's a fraction bar. I'm going to plug in this 3x minus 7 over 7. And I'm simplifying at the top. That's a 3x minus 4 over 7. Can't go any further. I did not get an x to pop out. So again, there's another reason why those are not inverses. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.